once you've shifted and scrunched and sized and spun all of your symbol instances in your symbol set around, and yes, all of these do begin with S, we might want to use the symbol stainer tool to make some of these a slightly different color. To use this, I need to change the fill color and I'm going to pick say a blue. And if I click just briefly on an object, then it will change color. If I click even more briefly, it will show just a slight tint and I can use tiny little clicks to repeatedly get to eventually the target color. So quick little circles will give a rough and partial tint to an object. Again, it's a bit of practice, but you'll want to loop around if you want to give a subtly different tint to several of these instances, because if you just click and hold for a couple of seconds, it's going to completely change. I might pick a red and move around and give some of these a little bit more of a red feel. Maybe a green for some of these ones up in the corner. And very quickly, you'll be able to bring quite a bit of variety to these different butterflies. If I want to remove the effect, say some of these in the middle are looking a little bit washed out, I can hold down the Option or Alt key and it will reverse. It'll just remove the tints, which is great. If you've gone too far, you can get back to it being a bit more normal and keep some of these a little bit brighter in this case. A slightly more subtle option, though, is the option to maintain the existing level of tinting, but to change the color. So, for example, this blue, if I hold the Shift key down and try to tint it, then it will go quite a strong green. So to keep the existing density of change, but change the color, hold down the shift key. And I could repeat that and go to blue, holding shift, go over these quite a bit. And you'll see this one changed a lot more than this one, which hadn't really been tinted at all. And these ones changed to somewhere in between. 